what we've got first. Okay. Oh, man. So, yeah. So you have to forgive me. I'm still a little bit disorientated because of like work. I've driven in the van, come straight here into the studio. And so, um, okay. So, look, if you're here for the first time, my name is Jason and my company is. You should all know it off by heart by now, septictank.co.uk. Okay, so I've been doing septic tanks for 20 years. I consult for the Environmental Agency, for UK building regs. I've been helping people fix their septic tank problems for years and years, and I love septic tanks. It all started when I had to put my own septic tank in one day, and um, that's how I got into septic tanks. And before that, my dad used to have a septic tank, funnily enough, yeah. When I used to live in Oswald Street, he used to have a septic tank and uh, always used to intrigue me, this fantastic thing down the bottom of the garden full of these worms. And, uh, yeah, that's what I suppose, you know, looking back, that's when it first entered my heart, septic tank, world of septic tanks. Anyway, enough reminiscing. So... Let's have a look at your questions. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right, so Peter, what is all this about the government compliance form? Okay, that's a very good question, Peter. All right, so I'm going to talk to the audience uh, like this is their very first time that they've actually um, tuned in. Okay, so, there's something called a government <coughs> compliance form. <coughs> it hasn't really got anything to do with the septic tank ban that comes into force on the 1st of Jan. It's something completely different, almost like when you go um, and it'll an MOT certificate for the car or when you park, go into a, a car park, you have to get a parking ticket. <laughs> this government compliance form, <clears throat> the government recently um, uh, basically released a law saying that everyone that owns a septic tank has got to have a government compliance form. And the form, you can find it on UK building regs, right? <clears throat> and this form is basically like a template and um, on this template so you've got to literally download this template or print it off and the temp on the template you've got to tell them what sewage system you've got you've got to tell them um, the capacity of it you've got to tell them how old it is uh, so in fact, on there, if I just put, if I put age, um, you've also got to say how you maintain it, how it's maintained. You've also got to state if it's ever been repaired or altered. And um, you've got to say how many times, so you can explain how it's maintained, um, times, you've got to explain the times it's been emptied. <clears throat> so it's basically a massive template, and you've got to download this template, and you've got to fill out all this information, right? And um, you've got to put one in the kitchen and you've got to lodge one with the solicitor. Now, I'll be honest with you. 99% of people don't even know this government compliance form exists. And that's not their fault. It's just a lot of these laws seem to come out. And there's no kind of promotion with these rules and regulations. And so basically what happens is this. At any time, the environmental agency or building control officer can come out and he can ask to see your um, certificate, your government compliance form for your septic tank. <clears throat> if you haven't got one, it's not a criminal offence as yet, I say. All right, so you shouldn't be fined for it. But 
solicitors and people who are buying houses are taking advantage of the fact that <clears throat> if they're buying a house that's got a septic tank or a sewage treatment plant and it doesn't have a government compliance form, then they're taking major, major advantage of those people. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say you've got a house at the moment, right? And you've got a septic tank. And you may have had your septic tank for a year. You may have had it for 50 years. You may have lived in the property. You may have inherited a property and you've just found out it's a septic tank. It's irrelevant. Right, but let me tell you when this is really going to make you angry or regret or rue the day you never got the government compliance form. So let's say this is my house, and I've got a septic tank down the garden, okay? And what happens is this. You come to buy my property, and your solicitor will ask me if I've got a government compliance form for my septic tank. And I'll say, no, I haven't. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll have a look through the drawers and rummage through those and see what I can find. And so I'll, I'll dig out maybe some receipts from the septic tank emptying firms that jetted it, I don't know, three or four years ago, that maybe I've got it emptied regularly every year, show them the receipts, and the solicitor will come back and say, well, this isn't a legal form of documentation. I mean, you could have just got this from your next door neighbor. You could have got it from anywhere. So it's not really giving us... A, 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 a true understanding of what system you've got and the state that it's in. Okay, so, but, but and the, the, their solicitor will say, well, listen, don't worry about it. Uh, and then what happens, they come back a week or two later and they'll say, we're concerned, okay? We're concerned because you don't seem to know what, system you've got in and if you do know what system you've got in because you might have taken some pictures and sent it to them they will say well you can't prove to us or show us what state or condition your sewage system's in and that poses a problem because the people then go away and think mm, okay we've got a chance to knock their price down now. And, and look, do you know the amount of people that ring me up fuming that this has happened to them? All right, so let's just stick with me. So you come back to me and you say, okay, well, we don't know much about septic tanks. We're not sure about the state of your septic tank. So um, <clears throat> we want to get a quote to put a new septic tank in if we move into your house. And so most people will get a quote for anywhere from six to nine thousand pounds. Now, this is on a normal small house, right? And there's different variables. If you're by a water course, oh man, right? The quotes can go from six to nine, and I'm not kidding you, to like thirty-five thousand quid. So. <clears throat> There's variables here, but let's just keep it simple. So they'll come back to me and they'll say, look, Jason, we've got a quote off someone. And they've given us a quote, which is probably about six or nine thousand pounds, right? But they will put in a quote for 13,000 quid. That's how it works. People want to make money. People want to reduce the price. I'm not saying everyone's dishonest, right? So don't get me wrong here. I'm not tarring everyone with the same brush. I'm just saying, from my experience, that this is what happens. That's all I'm saying. And, oh, man, uh, on the ones up from this, it's, I've, had, I've seen people just lose 40, 50 grand, bang, just like that. So they come back and they say, Jason, we've had a quote. In fact, we've had three quotes, and um, <clears throat> 13 to 15 grand. I'll be like, to my wife, I am not dropping my house price by 13 to 15 grand, stuff it, I'm not doing it. But then the voice of reason starts to kick in and you're saying, well, these people do want to buy my house. I have got a septic tank. What if the next people who want to buy my property have the same issue? And it's going to be another six months down the line and you start thinking like this. So you go back 
and you say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll drop it nine grand or eight grand, maybe half that, right? Then they say, no, we're not doing it. We've got to empty it every year. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. It's an unthinking. Look, it's 13 grand or nothing. Forget it. Or and say, I could come in once more. I say, look, I'll come in and I'll give you, I'll drop it. 11,000 quid, that's my final offer, take it or leave it, and they'll say, take it, because they've been quoted this, you see. <laughs> so then suddenly, whatever your house is, you've now got to drop it. 10, 11, 20, 30, 40 grand. And that is what a government compliance form will protect you from. Now, I'm not trying to sell you a government compliance form, because I'm sick and tired of people getting ripped off by this practice, right? So, I normally, and have done for the last few years, I sell these government compliance forms for, um, they're about 300 quid. But, I'm giving them away at the moment. Yes, I'm actually giving them away. Because there's no catch, there's no con. For the next three, three, for the next three months, you can get one free, all right? So they're free. All you need to do is go to um, septic tank uk, and on the left-hand side, I think it's the first or the second one down, just click that, put your email address in there, and I will send you a free government compliance form, right? And you can print as many off as you want, and you'll get the form, and uh, as I said, you just got to fill in the blanks. Uh, I filled it all out for you. And then put one in your kitchen, and give one to your solicitor, <clears throat> give some to your neighbours if you want. But the point being is, <laughs> it's free, and it will save you. It will save you anywhere. I kid you not, right? It'll save you anywhere from nine to 40,000 pounds. And it's free, there's no catch, no catch at all. So that is what the government compliance form is all about. That's how it catches people out. But I'm giving them away free, so go to septictank.co.uk and get yours for free today. So how was that? All right, that's good, isn't it? Okay, so, so there you go. All right. So you didn't expect that now, did you? Maybe you did. Maybe you thought, that guy, Jason, he's a nice lad, that Jason. And uh, <coughs> he likes giving away things for free. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Okay. So that is that. All right. So who else have we got? We've done Peter. I don't think he answered that yesterday. I answered that yesterday. Thank you very much for all your questions, by the way. Really uh, keep them coming. What is a cube septic tank? Okay. Okay. That's a good, well, okay. It's a septic tank, obviously, as you as you stated. So the cube septic tank is um, It's called a cube septic tank, and I'm not being funny here, because it's in the shape of a cube, okay, which is good. And it comes in a metal cage, like so. And it has an inlet, and it has an outlet. And that is what the cube septic tank looks like. Um, I call it the cube because obviously it's a cube. <laughs> but no, it just you know came to me the name one day, cube septic tank. <clears throat> and water goes in here and water comes out here. And you can put any kind of soak away to it. What I normally do is myself, um, say this is the ground here. All right, that's the grass. Okay, that's good, yeah. I normally about, say, 10 foot away, dig a little soak away pit, 
a bit like that. And I fill it with gravel. And that's the soccer wing. So that's the cube septic tank there. <coughs> Really, really popular. They're my most popular selling septic tank because they're very easy to get in. The dimensions, right? They're like three foot by three foot by three foot. I mean, I'm six foot two, right? So um, I'm standing on my tiptoes, but it's like down down to my belly button, you know. So they're quite small tanks. They're easy to put in. They take probably. I don't know. All right, let's 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 exaggerate here. Let's let's go way over rather than under, right? I reckon the, with a the digger, they'll take you about 40 minutes to put in. But let's exaggerate here and let's say they'll take you an hour to an hour and a half, right, to, to install. And the beauty with them is once you put them in like that, what I do, <clears throat> I fill it with water first. Fill it with water, and then I put concrete or cement down the sides here. I leave about an inch or two inches, and um, and that's it. And that is the cube septic tank. And the reason why they're so popular is because they're only two hundred and ninety-nine quid. There you go. So that is the cube septic tank. So. I don't know what else to say, but thank you very much for your questions, and um, I hope I explained it well enough for you. All right, so what other questions have we got? Have we got? Have we got? 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 <clears throat> what is the EN1256? Ah, very good question. Okay, so Simon, okay, Simon. So Simon's asking, what is the EN12566? Well, I'm going to keep it really simple. It's a certificate. Okay, it's a government recognized approved certif certificate that um, the British government, well, the UK government, requires all septic tanks to have. It's basically, I suppose, like an MOT certificate. It, an MOT certificate says that this car is worthy of being, <clears throat> it's worthy of being able to drive on the roads and it's in a, um, it's in a good enough condition that it, it's safe to you and, and other, other motor users. Blah, 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 you get what I'm trying to say. So the EN12566-1 is basically a certificate of confirmation stating that it's built to a certain standard, certain spec, certain quality. And building rigs will ask you if you've got a septic tank for a domestic property, has it got that certificate? And if you bought a septic tank from me, septictank.co.uk, yes, they all have got those certificates. Some um, septic tank manufacturers will um, sell you tanks from China and places like that. Not that there's anything wrong with China, but their septic tanks may not quite be legal for this country, okay? So <clears throat> that's what that certificate is. Okay, okay, that's a good question too. Okay, what does the dash three mean? <laughs> all right, so 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 dash one. All right, so dash three. Wow, oh. you have been doing your homework. Whoever whoever's asking these questions, well done, Simon. You have been doing your homework. Okay, so so. I put this up here, it'll make it easier. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. EN12566-1. Well, that is for a septic tank. A domestic septic tank, how about that? So, the EN12566-3 
is specifically for sewage treatment plants. All right, there you go, it's a sewage treatment plant. So again, <coughs> it means that the sewage treatment plant can legally discharge, well, into a water course, obviously that's what sewage treatment plants do, but it's a sewage treatment plant, I suppose, is compared, if you imagine a septic tank as a Ford, kind of Vauxhall, kind of bracket, a sewage treatment plant treats the sewage more than that. So you're starting to get into um, kind of BMW, Mercedes kind of territory, quality-wise, above a septic tank. And that EM12566-3 certification basically says that, it's again, it's built to a certain spec, a certain standard, and that the government recognised them and it can be discharged, legally discharged into a water course. And so these are uh, a government approved certifications, right? That the government and UK building regs recognize. In fact, if you're putting a sewage treatment plant in, that's one of the first things that they'll ask you, what certification does it have? And so if it hasn't got any, they won't allow it, which is fair enough, you know, but, Again, and this isn't a sales pitch, but um, we I sell something called the Ecosystem. It's a non-electric sewage treatment plant. And, of course, it comes with the EN12566-3. We love certificates, you know. It makes everything legal and above board. And um, <clears throat> there's no other way to go. So there you go. So you're getting quite a broad spectrum of answers tonight but that's because you've given me quite a broad spectrum of questions so oh all right give me a second to wipe my board off all right so <clears throat> what are the questions oh, have we got here oh right we got a controversial one in fact look contro controversial controversial right this is not from my point of view or from your point of view thank you very much brian for answering asking this question i don't even know if i spelt that right <laughs> I think it's controversial how I spelt controversial, to be honest with you. But <clears throat> the point is this, right? This is a very, very, very good question. Probably the last one I'm going to answer this evening. Right. Why do some, why do some companies say that septic tank soak away crates are illegal? That's a very, very good question. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep this really simple. A soak away crate, let me just explain what a soak away crate is first, in case there's anyone watching this that just doesn't know, right? A soak away crate looks something like that. And typically they hold about 200 liters <clears throat> of liquid. And a soak away crate is basically designed to retain liquid in a cavity so you don't lose your cavity. Now that may sound double Dutch, but let me give it to you like this. Let's say that's the ground. Let's say that's your hole, right? Now, as it stands, as it stands, a hole is a hole is a hole. Now, that may sound really weird to you, but what I'm trying to say is the space, there's 100% space, right, in this hole, all right? Now, that's obvious, obvious obviously, it's a space, Jason. Yeah, okay, so we got that, okay. But this is where people forget that concept, right? So. They've got a hole, and then what they'll do, they'll fill that hole in with gravel. 
so that's my soak away and i've just filled the hole back in with gravel so what have i done i've just filled the hole back in again yeah that's right so if i wanted to put a load of liquid in there i can't really get much liquid in there because i've just filled the hole back in with gravel so whereas that before was a hundred percent cavity in reality now there's probably only five percent of the cavity left available and <clears throat> not many people know that to be honest because why would you want to know it unless you looked for it and so if you're trying to make a soak away and you build it to a certain spec the specs normally based on the fact of the cavity of the hole but once you fill it in the dynamic changes so if you come from a, a hole that's a hundred percent space like i'm in to filling it up with gravel you know so um now so why am i talking about that well okay let me get to that now all right so to retain so to fill the hole in and to retain your cavity clever 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 german scientists came up with soak away crates so they worked out they worked out they could make a box a crate and you could put them in the hole like so <clears throat> And although they would fill the hole up, they didn't actually fill the cavity up, which is nuts, isn't it? So water could now go in, in into each one of these cells from your from your septic tank. And from there it would just percolate nicely into the soil. So that is the idea and the concept behind soak away crates, whether they're rainwater soak away crates or whether they're septic tank soak away crates. Now, let me show you a big, 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 big mistake that every, not everyone, but most people make, and it costs them a lot of money, right? Now, <clears throat> on the market, there are two types of crates. We've just explained. We have explained how they work. But they are rainwater crates, and there are septic tank. Have we got enough space there? Yeah. Septic tank soak away crates. Now, they're the two types of different crates on the UK market. One, two. Now, rainwater crates, rainwater crates are specifically designed for rainwater. Okay. So they're designed for, specifically designed For, for rainwater, right? They are not designed for septic tank soakaways. Okay, so when people say it's illegal to use crates, rainwater crates, for a septic tank soak away. They're a hundred percent right. So they are not designed. So they are illegal for septic tanks and soakaways. Fact. Septic tank soak away crates are just designed for septic tanks. So what's the difference then? 
Well, <clears throat> the difference is price and problems. Now, <clears throat> rainwater crates are a lot, lot cheaper to buy. Well, about half the price, right? And a septic tank crate is. All right, so rainwater crates are half the price. Okay? Soak away crates at half the price. All right, so that's difference number one. But number two, the membrane is not suitable. So let's say these are all your crates in your hole. And then you put your membrane around it. Now, most builders go for these crates because they save about two or three hundred quid. Well, that's fine until this happens. The rainwater crates that have been used soak up, the liquid goes in there, but the membrane balloons because it lets the water in, but it doesn't let it out. That's, that's how it's designed. So what happens, it balloons. So it goes from that shape and swells and becomes a big balloon. And then if it doesn't burst, it just stops working. And all the water that came into the soak away just backs up back towards the house. <clears throat> and so, in most cases, in 99% of the time, the builder will get a call in six months' time. I saw why he's not working. And he's like, oh, no. And he'll go in. And, and then he'll have to go back. And then he can put some more of those in if he wants. But he'll spend twice as much. It would have been cheaper for him to do it the right way to begin with. Soak away crates, right? Yes, there are a few quid more, right? But there's a saying. For the sake of a horse shoe nail, right? The sake of a horseshoe nail, the battle was lost. So if you're gonna do the job, you may as well do it properly, right? Sokoi crates, septic tank sokoi crates, and the membrane can deal with the suspended solids. So you're talking about probably saving 150 quid, 200 quid doing it that way. All right, if you're doing massive, massive sokoi, then maybe 500 quid. But, <laughs> but you haven't really saved because when their problem comes down the line in six months' time, you've got to go back and you've got to spend a, a week or half a week fixing it all again. So you haven't saved a penny, you know. So <clears throat> that is the difference between rainwater crates and septic tank crates. So I hope that I've explained that um, okay for you. I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, I know you're all intelligent people out there, but it is late and you probably had a heavy day working like I have. But look, if you're after septic tank so-called crates, if you're after products with the EN12566-1 or the dash three, you want to make your septic tank compliant with the environmental agency and not waste and spend an extra 10, 20, 30, 40 grand when you sell your house, just go to septictank.co.uk and um, download the free forms, watch the free videos, get yourself a cube, get yourself crates, or if you want free help, If you want free help or you want free advice, just give us a bell on 0800 907 0051. There you go, look at that. And, um, you know, I'll be only too willing 
to help you. So thank you very, very much for watching my live broadcast. Uh, I'm not going to do any more live broadcasts tonight. I'm whacked. I am. <laughs> I think this is my third one today. I try and do three a day. But look, thank you so, so much for your lovely questions. And please keep them coming. You know, there's loads of rules and regulations out there and, and, and misinformation and stuff like that. But look, I help and liaise with building control and the environmental agency. I'm conversant in septic tank law, drainage law, stuff like that. So if you need help on any aspect, give us a bell. If your tank stinks and smells, you can't do it, take it anymore, give us a bell. If you're having legal issues because you're connected to the shared system, give us a bell. So for whatever reason, go to septictank.co.uk or give us a ring. But either way, I'll be able to give you free help, free advice, and I'll help you find the perfect solution. So thank you so much for watching this live broadcast. You take care, and I'll speak to you soon.